stop drinking green tea. If you take any of these medications, that morning cup of green tea, it feels like a healthy ritual, a moment of calm before the day gets going. For thousands of years, we've trusted it as a pure, simple shield protecting our health with every sip. We love its powerful antioxidants and the way it makes us feel focused and well. But what if that shield had a crack? This isn't about scaring you away from a healthy habit. It's a vital warning. For thousands of people, that same cup of green tea isn't a guardian. It's a saboteur. It can quietly mess with the very prescription drugs you rely on to stay healthy. The complex chemistry of its powerful compounds can cause dangerous interactions, from triggering blood clots to causing a cancer treatment to fail. We are exposing this hidden danger today. We're going through seven common prescription drugs that could turn your healthy habit into a serious problem. You'll want to stick around for the whole list because number five is one of the most widely prescribed medications in the entire country. By the end of this video, you'll have the confidence to make the right choices for your health and ensure your medications and green tea are working together, not against each other. Let's get into it. Before we dive into the details, I need a moment of your time. If you're watching this video right now, it tells me one thing. You truly care about your well-being and the health of the people you love. That commitment is huge. Please, take just one second to show your support and hit that like button below. It really helps our message reach more people who need it. And if this is your first time joining us, a huge, warm welcome. We're a community dedicated to exploring the power of natural healing. Don't miss out on any of this life-changing information. Please go ahead and subscribe to our channel right now. Finally, here's a fun one. I'd absolutely love to know where you're watching from. We have friends all over the world on this wellness journey with us. Drop a comment below and just tell us your country. Let's connect and build this global health community together. Let's build this powerful network together. Number 1. Bortezomib First on our list, and maybe the most critical interaction, is with a medication called Bortezomib, sold under the brand name Velcade. If you or someone you know has faced a diagnosis of multiple myeloma or mantle cell lymphoma, you might be familiar with this drug. Bortezomib is a powerful targeted chemotherapy agent. It's a type of drug called a proteasome inhibitor, and its whole job is to stop cancer cells from growing by messing up their internal machinery. Think of it like this. Every cell, including a cancer cell, has a garbage disposal system called the proteasome. It breaks down old proteins to keep the cell running. Bortezomib works by jamming that system in cancer cells. When the garbage piles up, the cell can't function and basically self-destructs. It's a highly effective, life-extending treatment. Actually, the polyphenols in green tea, specifically that famous antioxidant EGCG, can completely shut down bortezomib. We're not talking about a small dip in effectiveness. Studies show that green tea compounds can block the drug's anti-cancer effects. Research published in the journal Blood found that EGCG physically latches onto the bortezomib molecule. Once that bond forms, the drug's shape changes and it can't do its job anymore. It's like putting a cap over a key. That key, no matter how well made, can't open the lock. The drug is rendered useless. The consequences are catastrophic. A patient, thinking they're doing something healthy by drinking green tea during their treatment, could be accidentally canceling out their life-saving medication. Researchers even pointed out a cruel twist. Because EGCG might also reduce some of the drug's side effects, a patient might feel better drinking green tea, encouraging them to drink more, all while their cancer treatment is failing. This interaction is so serious that clinical recommendations are clear. Patients on bortezomib or similar drugs should completely abstain from green tea and its supplements. If you are on this medication, it's not about moderation. It's about avoiding it entirely. Please. Talk to your oncologist about this immediately. Number 2. Warfarin Next up is one of the oldest and most common blood thinners out there. Warfarin, also known as Coumadin. Warfarin is an anticoagulant, prescribed to millions to prevent blood clots. It's used for conditions like atrial fibrillation, 
deep vein thrombosis, or in people with mechanical heart valves. Its job is to make your blood less sticky, reducing the risk of a clot causing a stroke or a pulmonary embolism. It's a delicate balance. Too little effect, you risk clotting, but too much, and you risk dangerous bleeding. Patients on warfarin need regular blood tests to make sure their dose is dialed in perfectly. So, how does green tea mess with this? It's a classic tug of war. Warfarin works by blocking the action of vitamin K, which your body needs to make blood clot. Green tea, however, contains vitamin K. When you drink green tea, you're basically consuming the very thing your medication is trying to block. This can directly reduce warfarin's effectiveness. The vitamin K from the tea can overpower the drug, causing your INR level to drop and putting you right back at risk for a clot. Now, the key here is usually quantity and consistency. The amount of vitamin K in a single cup of green tea is pretty low, so an occasional cup is unlikely to cause a major issue for most people. The real danger comes from drinking very large quantities, like half a gallon to a gallon a day, as seen in one case report where a man's INR dropped to a dangerous level. The most important rule for anyone on warfarin is consistency. Don't suddenly start or stop drinking a lot of green tea without talking to your doctor. Any significant change in your diet needs to be discussed with your provider so they can manage your dose and keep you safe. Number 3. Theophylline At number 3, we have a medication that's been a staple in respiratory therapy for years. Theophylline Theophylline is a bronchodilator used to treat diseases like asthma and COPD. It works by relaxing the muscles in your airways, making it easier to breathe and relieving symptoms like wheezing and shortness of breath. While newer inhalers are more common now, it's still a vital medication for some patients with severe respiratory conditions. The problem with green tea here is all about caffeine. Green tea has caffeine, which is chemically very similar to theophylline. Your body uses a specific enzyme in your liver, called CYP1A2, to break down and get rid of both of them. When you have both at the same time, they have to compete. Think of it like a single checkout lane at the grocery store. Theophylline is in line, waiting to get processed by the cashier, the enzyme. But when you drink green tea, you send a bunch of caffeine into that same line. The cashier gets backed up. This slows down the processing of theophylline, causing it to build up in your bloodstream to higher levels than intended. This can lead to a big increase in the drug's side effects. The effective dose of theophylline is very close to the toxic dose. When levels get too high, patients can experience nervousness, headaches, insomnia, and a rapid irregular heartbeat. Essentially, the caffeine from the green tea is making the drug's stimulant-like side effects much stronger, which can be risky, especially for someone with a heart condition. Patients taking theophylline are often advised to limit caffeine from all sources, coffee, sodas, and yes, green tea. Number 4. Celeprolol Coming in at number 4 is a type of beta blocker used for high blood pressure, celeprolol. Celeprolol is part of the beta blocker family, a huge class of drugs for managing hypertension. They work by blocking adrenaline, which makes the heartbeat slower and with less force, lowering blood pressure. For someone relying on this, getting a consistent dose into their system is key to preventing heart attacks and strokes. The interaction with green tea here is a case of absorption blocking, and it's dramatic. The problem starts right in your gut. For celeprolol to get into your bloodstream, it needs to pass through the intestinal wall using special doorways called OATP transporters. Think of these as gates that let the drug into your system. Here's the issue. The catechins in green tea are potent blockers of these OATP transporters. When you drink green tea with your medication, the EGCG molecules basically jam those gates shut. They block the transporters, leaving the drug stranded in your intestine unable to get absorbed. One study found that green tea could slash the absorption of celeprolol by a shocking amount, in some cases reducing its presence in the blood by over 98%. The result is a major loss of blood pressure control. You're taking your pill, but it's simply not getting into your body to do its job. Your blood pressure can stay dangerously high, leaving you unprotected. This is especially sneaky because you'd have no idea it's happening. 
This isn't just with Celeprolol, either. Studies show green tea can also reduce the absorption of another beta blocker, Natalol, by as much as 85%. Anyone taking a beta blocker, especially these two, needs to talk to their doctor or pharmacist about their green tea habit. Number 5. Rosuvastatin At number 5, we've got one of the most prescribed drugs in medicine, taken by tens of millions of people, Rosuvastatin better known as Crestor. Rosuvastatin is a statin. Statins are the first line of defense against high cholesterol. They work by blocking a key enzyme in the liver that produces cholesterol. By lowering bad LDL cholesterol, statins dramatically reduce the risk of heart attacks and strokes. They are a critical tool for cardiovascular health. The interaction between green tea and rosuvastatin involves those same intestinal gateways we just talked about the OATP transporters. Just like Celeprolol, Rosuvastatin needs these transporters to get absorbed from your gut into your bloodstream. And as we know, the catechins in green tea are great at blocking them. When you take your Rosuvastatin with green tea, the EGCG can interfere with absorption. Studies have confirmed this. One study showed that taking green tea extract significantly reduced the body's exposure to Rosuvastatin. Another study with healthy volunteers found that EGCG reduced the drug's absorption by nearly 20%. Now, 20% might not sound as crazy as the 98% we saw with Celeprolol, but it can still be significant. That reduction means less of the drug is getting to your liver to do its job, which could make it less effective at lowering your cholesterol. You might think your cholesterol is under control when it's actually creeping back up. The story might even be more complicated. While some studies show green tea decreases the absorption of statins like rosuvastatin, other research suggests it might increase levels of others, like simvastatin. Given that green tea can mess with the blood levels of this vital medication, timing your dose several hours apart from your tea or discussing the impact with your doctor is a smart move. Number 6. Carbamazepine our sixth medication takes us into neurology. This is carbamazepine, often sold as Tegretol. Carbamazepine is an old-school workhorse of an anti-seizure drug. For decades, it's been used to control and prevent seizures in people with epilepsy. It works by calming the electrical activity in the brain. Think of a seizure as a sudden electrical storm in your brain's nerve cells. Carbamazepine helps calm that storm. For someone with epilepsy, stable blood levels of this drug are absolutely essential to staying seizure-free. The conflict here, once again, comes down to caffeine. But this time, it's not about absorption. The caffeine directly interferes with the drug's effect in the brain. Carbamazepine is working to suppress overexcited neurons and make it harder for a seizure to happen. Caffeine, on the other hand, is a central nervous system stimulant. It works by blocking receptors in the brain that lead to more excitement. So, you're taking two things with opposite effects. The carbamazepine is hitting the brakes, while the caffeine from your green tea is hitting the accelerator. This can directly reduce the drug's effectiveness. Studies have consistently shown that caffeine can lower the anti-seizure effects of carbamazepine and other similar drugs. It works against the medication, potentially leading to a breakthrough seizure in someone who was previously well-controlled. This is a really big deal to be aware of. A person with epilepsy could be taking their medication perfectly, but their morning tea habit could be undermining their treatment. Anyone taking carbamazepine should talk to their neurologist about their caffeine intake. Number 7. Ethos Oxymide Finally, at number 7, we have another important anti-seizure medication, ethos oximide, known as Zarontin. Ethos oximide is used for a very specific type of seizure called an absence seizure, once known as petit mal. Ethos oximide is great for this because it works on specific calcium channels in the brain to calm the abnormal electrical rhythm causing these lapses. Just like with our last one, the interaction with green tea is driven by caffeine. And again, it's a direct battle in the brain. Research has shown that caffeine actively works against the protective effects of ethosuximide. A study found that when caffeine was present, a much higher dose of ethosuximide was needed to get the same level of seizure protection. 
The researchers confirmed it was a pharmacodynamic interaction, meaning the caffeine was directly getting in the way of the drug's mechanism in the brain. The mechanism is likely the same as with carbamazepine. Ethosuximide is trying to stabilize things, while caffeine is stimulating them, making the brain more prone to seizure activity. This can lower the protective shield the medication provides. Patients being treated with ethosuximide should be advised to avoid caffeine from all sources, coffee, sodas, and yes, green tea. So, this is it. That cup of green tea you love, for all its benefits, needs to be handled with care if you're taking certain medications. This list is a powerful reminder that natural doesn't automatically mean safe in every situation. The very compounds that make plants medicinal are, by definition, biologically active, and they can absolutely interact with other active things, like prescription drugs. Your pharmacist and your doctor are your best resources for navigating these complex interactions. Make sure they know everything you're taking medications, supplements, and even your dietary habits, like drinking green tea. They're your partners in health. And with that, we wrap up today's video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. For more queries, I have also added some studies at the end of this video description. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Stay healthy. Stay fine.